uninformed opinion. The Third Reich failed to produce a single work of art, a single mental structure capable of satisfying even the meager liberalistic requirement of quality. The demolition of humanity and the conservation of works of the mind were as incompatible as air raid shelter and stork's nest, and the regenerated martial culture looked on its first day like the cities on their last a heap of rubble. To this culture, at least, the population practiced passive resistance. But the cultural energies allegedly released by National Socialism were in no way absorbed by the technical, political, or military spheres. The whole thing is truly barbarism, and triumphs as such, even over its own barbaric spirit. This can be seen in the sphere of strategy. The fascist era has not brought about a flowering of strategy, but abolished it. The great military conceptions were inseparable from cunning imagination, almost from private astuteness and initiative. They were part of a discipline relatively independent of the production process. The object was to derive decisive advantages from specialized innovations, such as diagonal battle lines or the accuracy of artillery. There was something of the bourgeois virtue of self-reliant enterprise in all this. Hannibal was a scion of merchants, not of heroes, and Napoleon of a democratic revolution. The element of bourgeois competition in the conduct of war has blown up in the face of fascism. The fascists raised to an absolute the basic idea of strategy, to exploit the temporary discrepancy between one nation with a leadership organized for murder and the total potential of the rest. Yet by taking this idea to its logical conclusion in inventing total war, and by erasing the distinction between army and industry, they themselves liquidated strategy. Today it is as antiquated as the sound of military bands and paintings of battleships. Hitler sought world dominion through concentrated terror. The means he used, however, were unstrategic. The accumulation of overwhelming forces at particular points, the crude frontal breakthrough, the mechanical encirclement of the enemy stranded by armored spearheads. This principle, wholly quantitative, positivistic, without surprises, thus everywhere public, and merging with, pu with publicity, no longer sufficed. The Allies, infinitely wealthier in economic resources, needed only to outdo the Germans and their own tactics to crush Hitler. The torpor and apathy of the war, the general defeatism which helped to protract its catastrophes, were conditioned by the decay of strategy. When all actions are mathematically calculated, they also take on a stupid quality, as if in mockery of the idea that anybody ought to be able to run the state this war is conducted, despite the radar and the artificial harbors, as if by a schoolboy sticking flags into a chart. Spengler saw in the downfall of the West the promise of a golden age of engineers. The prospect coming into view, however, is the downfall of technology itself.